I first got involved with reproductive biology in about 1988 when I first came to this department, had a chat with Bob Seamark and Geoffrey Robinson about the prospects for thinking about immunology of pregnancy and how this was an area that was developing in reproductive biology and potentially was going to be of substantial significance in the future. I was very lucky to get involved in reproductive biology at a time when uh, I think we were just beginning to think about how the immune system was interacting with the embryo at the outset of pregnancy and uh, to consider how signals from the mother's body were being transmitted to the embryo and supporting its, its development in that critical early phase of pre-implantation. We were keen to understand how immune regulators released from the mother's uterus were targeting the embryo and supporting its development. And we studied how cytokines released from the mother's uterus and overduct were helping the embryo to develop and implant. And we were really lucky to find that a key cytokine called GMCSF was released and turned out to have very potent activities in supporting the embryo. And then after a long period of um, discovery and I guess in animal models finding how this worked and looking at the different immune cell populations and uh, signalling pathways involved, we were able to take it to the human preclinical studies and eventually a clinical trial. And that's where we had the opportunity to develop uh, the new clinical product for miscarriage, Embryogen. Another major interest over the last several years has been to understand how immune tolerance is generated in early pregnancy and particularly how the mother's body comes to allow the embryo to implant and how that tolerant environment is generated at the outset of pregnancy. As I've sort of um, matured in my career and thought more about you know, why do we do research and what is the value of research, it's become increasingly important to me that our research is translated to improve human health and quality of life as far as we can thinking about how to move from animal work and bench work into um, the human clinical situation has become quite important to me. And I guess the development of the novel miscarriage treatment was a, a first example of that, being able to go right from the very fundamental work uh, in the animal and cellular studies right through to doing a clinical trial and then being able to get our product on the market to actually make a difference to women's lives and you know, that has been immensely satisfying and uh, really a highlight. I'm so excited to become um, appointed as the director of the Robinson Institute. It's uh, such a, an honour and you know really an enormous privilege but to be able to now move to influence the research of a much larger group of people and to think about strategy for the future, to identify the big research questions and to find ways to encourage and support younger researchers to address those big challenges is uh, going to be a great challenge and I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's, it's a great privilege and um, I'm really hoping to be able to do some important things and. Uh, I guess to steer the, the Institute towards a, an even better and grander future. I think that we've really laid a very solid foundation for the future through the absolutely fantastic work of the inaugural director. Uh, Rob Norman has really laid down a very solid foundation and uh, assembled some fantastic researchers, some excellent infrastructure and I think more importantly perhaps even than that the kind of enthusiasm and collegiality and the spirit the collaborative spirit particularly to work together to address some big questions and together we've been able to make some really big inroads for the one in six couples that experience infertility. What I'd like to do is tackle the challenge of preventing preterm delivery. I think we're well positioned, we've got the people, the skills, the willingness to take on that challenge and for me that's a top priority in the next five years. There are some other things I'd like to take on. I'm very interested to understand the early life and reproductive origins of some major childhood conditions, allergy and asthma, obesity as we've discussed and even some neurological conditions like autism are now understood to have their origins in the uterus before birth. We believe that there are inflammatory uh, stressors in the mother that are transmitted into the fetus that set up the path of development of disease after birth and we want to unravel those pathways and this will give us new prospects for I think improving and um, really improving the incidence and preventing some of these childhood illnesses. 
And when we get back to the infertility, which is still an important problem in our community, despite IVF, only perhaps 50% of couples are assisted by IVF, I would really like to think about how we can offer more choices to couples who have problems with their infertility and perhaps more control and ownership of our fertility. And this means raising awareness in the community about ownership, I think, of our, our reproductive capability. And it's about educating younger people to take care of their reproductive health right from the beginning of their uh, sexual lives. I'm so excited to take on this new role. I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I'm very enthusiastic about working with the wonderful team of people that uh, we have assembled, the fantastic young emerging star researchers, and I particularly want to work with those young people to um, give them the opportunity to really uh, do great science, great discovery, and turn those discoveries into things that can really improve people's lives and make a difference.